Can we start? Hello, everybody. So, welcome to my session, a fast and secure tumor website. So, once Albert Einstein said security and performance are the main factors of a tumor website. Okay, don't, don't start crying, it's fake news. So, it was me. I said it last year at the Joomla Day Germany. So, I had a similar talk there about fast and secure websites, what can you do, and uh, what are the basics actually. And that was the session, and it was very, very crowded. And so, that's the reason why I wanted to do it here, here as well, but in English now, to have another audience, more audience. So, and I think for me, the, the two factors are very essential when they decide about the success or failure of a website project online project and unfortunately many users don't really care about these factors and they take it as granted so I think we have to teach the users and the integrators and the agencies that, that are very important for success and before we start to get into it so uh, this is not a technical call so it's a community category we won't see any hacking vectors uh, attacks or SQL injections whatever no code just uh, the basics what you can do, what you shouldn't do, what you can do after you install your fresh installation, uh, installation, or if you take over a project, what where, where you should look first, and what you can do to improve the security or mitigate the security risk, uh, risks and uh, improve the performance. So, and so over the years, I collected a lot of do's and don'ts, and have a, a little bit of knowledge about this, uh, these topics, and so. And do time limits, so we don't have a lot of time to go into detail into all every every aspect because we could split the we should we have to, we would have to split uh, the session. We just go through uh, very quickly through through all the topics, the basics. And if you have any questions, just come to me afterwards or during the next three days or two days, and I can we can talk about it. So I split it a little bit. So the, the first part will be the security part, and what is the, what is the security? What does security mean? Why is it important? And um, so last year we, or the JEP, we had, I had also a session about security, and we had a three-layer approach. So we we divided a, a three possible layers. So where where you can improve the security depending on for, of whether it's in the system itself or on the server where Joomla is running on, on or the user that's sitting in front and are using Joomla. So, and um, what is security? So, it's, it's a pra practice to prevent un unauthorized uh, access uh, from, from external, from outside. So, in other words, so that, that you want to prevent that somebody can access your website, your Joomla instance, and do things what, what are not uh, meant to, to be done with your website. So, um, with the right access that you have uh, as a super user. So, and... Um, and you have, of course, security issues if, if it happens, if somebody can get into your system and, uh, for instance, uh, send system uh, spam emails or, or redirect your, your website to porn sites, whatever. So you don't really want this, but your visitors don't want to see it. Okay, Rick, I don't know. I'm not sure about you, but... In general. <laughs> <laughs> In general, yeah. So you want to sell maybe things. You want to sell stuff. You, know, you, want, you don't want to... To, to infect the computers or the, the laptops uh, of, of your visitors. And so this is, this is the, I think, so this is the reason why you, you should take care about security and you should keep, keep, uh, keep uh, the system up to date. So important is to know that security is, uh, is not a find forget task. So you don't put your website online and then just say, okay, I, I don't have to do anything. I just can let it run and, and I'm secured. So it's, it's really a, a conti continuous task, it's an ongoing task, and it's important to stay up to date. So this is very important, and um, also if you have customers, if you're an, an integrator or uh, agency, you have to make aware, your customers aware of it. So if you are using a content management system, a dynamic one, you cannot, uh, they really have to be get the, the support or the, the, or the help to, to stay secured. So that's also important. So coming to the three-layer approach, and starting with the user, of course, if it comes to the user, so the question is what can the users do or the, the user of the system do to improve the security? First of all, what you are thinking about is the password. So password is the main topic in this layer. So what can you do to improve uh, the password, to, the access to the system? So 
but also another point is also that you don't select easy to guess or easy to use uh, easy easy to guess um, uh, usernames like admin. So if you have, if you have a user account, super user account or administrator account, don't use admin or administrator because um, we had a lot uh, in the past. We had a lot of brute force attacks on WordPress. It was not Joomla, but because a lot of WordPress users use just use admin, and so you you you, you lose uh, one one uh, security barrier. So if you have a, a, a not easy to guess administrator name, so this is an, another maybe another factor or another another layer of security. So and um, what I also to uh, recommend to do is to separate content uh, user accounts. So a super user account from the uh, content user account. So the super user does uh, have uh, only the things to uh, that, um, should be very secured and then only has to be used for tasks that are, requires more permission rights, like installations or updates. And if you just have to put content on your website, then you could use another, another user account. So separate them, so don't mix them together. And of course, uh, using secure passwords. Okay, in, in Joomla it's like this, so the minimum length in the beginning when you install a fresh Joomla installation is four characters. I would say you should use at least eight characters, long passwords. So maybe we can change this in future, maybe in Joomla 4, whatever release. And uh, your password should contain, of course, integers and special characters. The more, the, more, the higher is the entropy, the, 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 the more difficult it is to guess the password. So in general, uh, if it comes to security, to, to hacks, whatever, most of the hacks are not happening uh, uh, with brute force attacks. It, it, it's not worth it. You cannot brute force uh, a Joomla website. So the la latency, the, the response time is just too high. Um, most of the hacks are happening through, through, Joomla, uh, through um, security flows. So, but still, you should take a secure, uh, uh, long enough password so it's not easy guessable. And even better is it is to use a password safe, password manager, like one password or last pass, uh, or you can use KeePass if you want to have a local database. So if you don't want to put it online on a, on a cloud server or whatever, so you can use KeePass and it's of course better you have, to, you have just one password. You can remember this password, maybe 30 characters long. So I have a master password of 30 characters. And the other password that I generated. What's that password? Sorry? Uh, wait, let me type it. <laughs> I can show you later, bro. After. During lunch. Um, so I, 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 I just have to remember one password. And my all other passwords I generate with, with the key generator. And they are 20, 20 characters long. Has character, uh, special characters. So nobody would ever guess it. I, I would never guess it. Uh, or even you know, brute force it. So this is even better to use. So. I hope everybody does it. Who is using a ma password manager? Very good. The others, please start to do. And never use a password twice, only once, especially not if you have an external, ser external service like LinkedIn, like we saw in the previous, uh, uh, previous uh, session, that they were not solved, they were, had a bad algorithm. So if, if they get hacked, they, they can guess your, they can find out your password, boot us your password, and and got it, and, and use in other services as well. So, and the good thing is, if you if you're using a password manager, you can create on the fly new passwords, unlimited amount of passwords. So it's great. So you, you won't be in the in a situation where you have to think about how what password should I use or what did I use, what is my usual password, whatever. So, and um, I get a lot of requests because of my private Joomla project, and a lot of users always uh, a lot of users just send me their credentials without uh, um, without me asking them so this is what you should never should do never send credentials via email n or anywhere uh, even forum i had even cases where they published they, they posted their, their credentials publicly in my forum that's crazy how can you do it and it's for super users and um sometimes you cannot solve the problem because they have a special constellation so you have to take the backup a backup file and debug it locally so and this is a little bit uh, tricky, and I, I also try to avoid it. But um, sometimes you cannot solve problems w without just with, uh, logging into the backend and look what the settings are, what he, he did. So I try to, I, I always ask for, for a backup file that has no sensitive data. So they should create a, a staging environment or a subdomain, whatever, or send me a file where they remove all the users or, or all the files that they're using on the server. And this is a temporary solu solution, but what you can do and, and try to avoid to share things that are 
that contain passwords. So in Germany we say Gesunder uh, Menschenverstand. I think that uh, you should know, David. So use the common sense. Be smart. Don't share things that shouldn't be sh sh uh, shared. The second layer is the uh, Joomla layer, so the application layer. And um, it's if you if you if you use the basics, if you uh, yeah, it, it's it's not it's not that complicated to to keep. Joomla safe and secure if you use the basics. So the basics for me are the, the I call it the Victor's golden rules. So my golden rules are backups and updates. They are the most important things to do. So backups, I think David should know. So important is not just creating backups when you log in once a week or once a month. So you, you should create a backup strategy. So create, create backup. Um, what I do, okay, maybe I, I overdo it a little bit in my projects. So I do daily backups over cron job. I do weekly complete backups for also from the complete server and also database backups. And I keep them for one month and then afterwards I, I keep them in a weekly base. So I could now recover two, three years back to, to my web, to the state that I had two, three years back. So, so it's important that you not just create backups, but you create them regularly, and more important, it is even more important is to, to check the integrity of backups. So it, it does not help you if you create, you have a lot of backups, but you cannot restore from them. So once, so they, in my case, what I'm doing is that the, the backups that I keep for longer time, for longer time, for a period of time, I, I always restore them on my local machine, look whether everything is fine, everything is working, also restore them on my server, and everything is work, I just, uh, archive it in my on my cloud server and also in another place so also separate the archives uh, from the from the server where you run this instance so that they should be separated so if you, something goes wrong or your server crashes you still have backups and also I also save them on a on a separated hard drive and if, if it's possible for you if you're using uh, if your host uh, provides it you should try to use external backup solutions what I prefer and I recommend and not in, within the same layer. So, uh, of course, we have great component, a great component, well, two maybe, who knows. <laughs> so, it's also good, of course, to use uh, this backup uh, functionality if you cannot, if you don't have an other possibilities. But if you are running on a server and you use Plesk, for instance, so you could yeah, just use the, the backup uh, within Plesk because then you are layer above and you, 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 you can get sure that you Get, get everything. So it's the same with security tools, security extensions. We'll come to this later. So if you if your hosts are providing you a possibility or you have SSH access, it's even better, it's even easier. So that you can do once a month a manual backup. You can just go and tar or zip, zip the complete folders with subfolders and do a MySQL dump and you will have a clean backup of your pro project. So this is also important not just to rely on uh, some, some uh, additional uh, components or whatever. And regarding updates, I, not just core updates, they are very important, especially the security updates. Always, if, if it comes to security, always um, always make the update I immediately. We also do, an, uh, almost of the time, uh, we do an announcement if it's at uh, high severity. Um, but, but do it because we, we saw um, in the past, we saw that after we release a security update, it, so some hours later, the, the attacks already started, automated att attacks are already starting, uh, are started. So you should, you should be fast. So if, if we release a security update immediately. So it, of course something can break. A lot of people are waiting and say, okay, I will do it tomorrow or the day after tomorrow. I will look in the forum, maybe something bro will break in my, my instance. That's okay because uh, the security is more important than the, the website is, is broken for a while. So you can still look, well, there are many solutions that you can then afterwards put in. But security is always, always to be first. So security is always normal updates. Okay, you don't have to to update immediately, but you can you can do it one day later, whatever. And of course, it's important not just uh, uh, not just update the core, but also extensions. So every extension, and important is to to use extensions that provide the update ser server uh, server functionality, the core from the core. <coughs> so uh, we also have in the Joomla extensions directory you see you see a message, a next screen, whatever. Uh, that says uh, this extension does not use uh, and the update server comp uh, functionality. So try to avoid using these extensions because if the, ex if the developer is really up to date and he, is, he cares for his extensions, he will also include this update server mechanism. 
So it's also important because you get also always notified directly if there is an update. And if you use ex old extensions that does not support this, uh, maybe you are completely outdated, but you just simply don't, don't know because you don't, don't check it manually. So it's try to look if, uh, it's quite simple if you open the extension, if you, if you uh, unarchive it, you see XML manifest file, if you open it, there's, there's, there's one line that says update server. It's an, and if you see this, to, it's a link to an XML file, then this extension supports the uh, update server mechanism, and that's good for you. And in general, less extension means less uh, uh, um, attack areas, so try to avoid using too much extensions. So if you can solve something over a template overwrite, over open with a core, or writing a s small plugin, just use the plugin. Or well, just, just do it. L don't install an additional big extension or big component, uh, big plugin or whatever, uh, just to, 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 to show something in the article or whatever, or a social media button or, or model, model window. You don't have it because we have, uh, we have these uh, things in, in the core already. And if you write an own plugin or let it write for somebody, so no one will know that uh, this plugin and the, the danger to get hacked over this plugin is very, very minimal. So try to solve things over tem template overrides. I think everybody knows of you how template overrides work. And it's quite easy and, and they are really powerful. So don't install big things. And also important is look through your project, go through all the list and remove every extension that you don't use. So everything, do not deactivate extensions or components or plugins, whatever. Because they are not, they are not inst instantiated if the process is in the Joomla process, but the problem is you have still the files on the server. So if they have some flaws, uh, some, some security flaws, some uh, issues, they still can be uh, called from outside. So no, not in the Joomla process itself, uh, but, but still the files are still there. So, so remove everything that you don't need in the, in the core, in, in your Joomla instance. Don't let them lay, lay around. It's, yeah. It's a big, big problem. So also, if you take over a project, most of the time you will see a lot of extensions that they were mm. installed once, but never, never used and never, never removed. Go through it and just remove everything what you do need. And of course, if you use a lot of plugins, it, it takes time too. So we will come better to this part for performance. The more you use, the, the, the slower is your system. So, or maybe, yeah, I think that's enough. And. Another point, uh, just a side note. So, if you take over a project or you want to, to take the, uh, to check the integrity of the system, of the core, uh, I created a um, checksum project. Then you can you can you can install you can put a small scan, scanner file, PHP file in the root, and just start it, and it will automatically check all the core files or for modifications or, or if there are some core files missing or what, what, what files were included new and new. So this is something maybe you can check. I can post the link later if you want to see it. So it's, it's quite nice and in some sec 10 seconds you will get a result uh, with every modification and then you can check whether some core files were touched or not. And if you're not sure, uh, in the latest version 3.7, I think we got the, there's a possibility that you can overwrite the existing Joomla core files. Is it since 3.7, David? Overwrite existing Joomla core files? I, okay, he doesn't know. <laughs> so if you go to Joomla update to the component, you can still check and then you see a button, okay, I want to reinstall the Joomla core files. This is what you can do. But of course, if you have core hacks, never do core hacks. Never. But, yeah. yeah, never. <laughs> okay, what's really important, what's really important, backend prote uh, protection. Use, uh, if you have an Apache Edge access protection, use it. Do protect the backend. Nobody should be able to call at, uh, to go to administrator and open the mask, the form mask. Okay, that's very very important. Always protect the backend with with a HTTP access pop up or whatever. So what you're using there. So it's very important. First of all, you they don't have access, they cannot look. But also, if you have a security thing in within the administrator folder, uh, they won't be able to look, uh, look to open to access it. And also, uh, attacks by bots, everything will be, will be limited, will be blocked. So it's very important, always, always, always uh, protect your backend with an edge access, or if you're a hosting company, you will have maybe an option, protect this folder, whatever, make a protection. I, you can even, yes? How about using the secret word in the post uh, in the URL? Yeah, this is, no, no, no. Okay. It's okay, it's, it's something, okay. Maybe this is something what you can use if you could not, if you don't have the possibility to protect, to do an HX protection, but 
I don't, I don't know a uh, um, hoster where you cannot do this. So, but, but it's, it's not good. So it, it, it's, the problem is it's always, it also triggers a plugin. So it's already in the system. So it's, you, you should block server side. So it's a layer above. It's way, way better, it's way more important to do it. But it's, it's, it's a possibility, but I also have an extension that does this with a token, mm -hmm. but it's, it's not the protection that you want to have. So it's better to protect the complete access from, from all possible requests. And where, where, okay, head, uh, blah, 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 blah. as I said, yeah, you can, you could use the plugin, but don't do it. Make, make the protection. And um, for early, in the earliest day, uh, days when we had Joomla 1.0, 1 1.5 1 or whatever, so some ex extensions used to load things from the backend. And then you got always in front and you got an arrow, please log in now. This should not happen because now the extensions, I don't know any extension that does load things from the backend. So nowadays, and if they do, uh, they are not really good uh, developed or not really good written. You should get rid of them and maybe find other ones. And another point that's also important as a user, uh, activate two-factor authentication. So I think most of you know what it is. You saw already Google or... Ah, I have something before. Scheiße, I have it. I got it. I just want to show you. So there are two possibilities. It's a hardware device. It's a YubiKey. Joomla branded. But you can also, but you can also use a Google Authenticator. So a virtual, virtual one. Or a LastPass Authenticator. Whatever. There are a lot of extension, a lot of applications. And that's very important. Then you have a second layer. So a second barrier uh, to, to get to, into the system. So if somebody will guess so, like, we guess your password, or you are in a free Wi Fi, you don't use HTTPS. They are men in the middle attack and they get your password and your credentials. But still, they cannot log in a second time because the, 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 the second uh, authenticator step is always different. So, it's time based, it changes or, or each 30 seconds, and uh, the code is always different. So, if, even if they have your credentials, they would have to guess the second pass password, so to say, the second key. And it, it changes uh, every uh, 30 seconds. So the problem, the, the good thing is they cannot brute force attack it because if they try to brute force it, the six, six digit, it will also, it will be a, in 30 seconds, it will be another one. So it's, it improves the security. What I do is um, I do it for a super user, for the super user, but uh, you can also uh, uh, activate it for the front end if you have a forum or whatever. But I wouldn't force your, your, uh, your users to, to use it um, because you don't know whether they have a smartphone uh, advice that is compatible or whether they have this one. But for you as a super user, for your own projects, it's, it's a great tool to improve the security, to in, in, uh, the secu increase the security. So this is very good. If you have forms, of, of course, use captures if you don't want to be spammed to emails. So maybe no capture is a good way. It's a good balance, so do not to make it too hard for people, for, for humans, for, for, for your visitors, but also make it hard but for, for the bots. Also, we'll think, then you, what you can do, maybe, I don't know whether all of you know, you can increase uh, the complexity of passwords. We have an option in, the, in Joomla. Uh, you know what I'm talking about? Okay, I also had a plugin, but now the plugin is obsolete because we have it in the core. If you go to Comp Users and then click on Options, there's a tab. Uh, increase complexity or something, and then you can you can define how strong should the password be. What the higher the higher the, the more entropy the better it is, but not, don't make it too hard for the people. So if you set it on 20 characters long, it's not that good. It's not that user friendly. Make it a little bit higher, maybe eight characters, but they should use at least one uppercase or lowercase and one digit or one, in, one integer, and maybe one special char. char. So th th this will make the password. Uh, secure enough because the higher it is, the, the more the less uh, worth it is. Because some on other on a point, it, it makes no <coughs> sense to put more information to it. Uh, they are not really guessable or not, not brute force. All right. So this is one thing what you should do. And then if you um, check the user rights, so uh, when I see when I have a project or when I see a website, they have so many users and they have, lots of them have super user rights. Even they just have to create something or just write articles or just uh, modify a module. 
and you don't you don't need super user rights or admin backend rights to make such small things small changes on the website so for instance the module can be can be modified uh, in the front end you don't have to be locked lock in in the back end most of the modules but uh, so you go through the list if you have a lot of users try to limit as much as possible the user rights and just have one super user or as many as you need but uh, not 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 everybody should have so much uh, so much permission rights and um, in this case, I, I, uh, delete temporary access. Um, what I always, that's the point uh, that's related to me, uh, because we, once uh, in the three point something, we included the update notification plugin. As you may, you may remember that you get an, uh, an email as a super user that uh, um, Joomla update is available. You know this function. And um, I used to help a lot of people b before we had this plugin. And I had super user rights, and after, after I helped them, I just quit and delete the, the, the email or whatever. So it, I didn't have any credentials anymore, I didn't have any credentials anymore. And then I, we, we, we activated, and the next update, I got, I think, 15 or 20 emails that, that there's an update available for my website. And it was not my website, it was the websites of the guys who I helped once, maybe two years ago. So they did never clean my temporary access, so I could still access the, the website. With my with the super user that they sent me, so this is also important. If you if you need some help, if you create temporary accounts, always clean afterwards. Mm -hmm. Don't forget it. So. Sorry about that. Yeah. Why don't you put it on a timeline as a developer of Joomla to create users that have uh, expiry date? Sorry once again. Why don't you put on a timeline of development of Joomla and have users that have an expiry an expiration? It's, it's a good point. Uh, you know you know what. Uh, you can go to GitHub, make a pull request. <laughs> I can show you how to do this. How to do this? But it's a, it's a good point. Maybe we should think of it. It's a good, great idea. It's a great idea. That would help a lot of in such cases for supporters. It would be great just for one day or something. But still, if you have access, it's always dangerous if you have a one-day access. But it, it makes sense to avoid such cases. It's, it's good. Good point. I will I will keep it in mind. I think I think Roland has something in A plugin. Yeah. Okay, but but, but uh, such a feature is really good. So maybe we should take it into the core. I think it's it's important because I, I get a lot of such requests where I get access to the website, and you know how the people are. They forget or they never changed it or never changed the password. Or, but it's a good thing, yeah. All right. Uh, another point is disable reg registration for new websites so if you don't need registration. But this is obsolete too because in the newer versions of Joomla, this feature or this option is uh, deactivated by default. So if you if you install a new Joomla installation, Joomla website, uh, this option is deactivated. So in, in earlier versions, it was always activated by default. And if you don't pay attention, uh, then everybody could could create an account on you. And we had some problems with the chat sessions stuff. And if you could create an account, you could also get more rights than if, if there's a security flow, you can get more rights as a user and maybe back, uh, log into the backend if, if it's not yeah, meant to be. And another point, uh, it's, uh, it's using security extensions. So that's a little bit tricky. Uh, so they provide you maybe, uh, not maybe, but they provide you a fa false uh, feeling of security. So we call it snack oil, we call it snack oil, schlang oil. And so that's a problem. You think you are secure, but you're not really secured. Because you should avoid to, to have a security thing that should protect or help the application within the same layer. So if you, if you need protection, you need, uh, you need security, you should always go a layer high, a higher level. So you should search for something on the server side. So if you need uh, protection against uh, or block uh, country access from, from Russia or China, whatever. So do it over the server settings, ser server firewall, mod security rules, fail to pay, all these things, and not uh, within within the applic application itself. Sh sure, we have extensions; they are quite useful to check permission rights or defaults, whatever. Th that are small helpers. That, that that's good. That, that's okay. To, uh, that's good extensions. But do not um, like firewalls, or whatever. That's that's you should go always a higher level. So don't don't feel safe just because you have a, a extension that says it, it secures your, secures your website perfectly. And another point is when you get, get hacked, what should I do? First thing is, is, of course, most important, put the website offline. Not just put it offline in the global settings, never. Completely, it, 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 it should never be callable or accessible from the, from the browser, from external. 
So you can set a rule, set an access uh, protection, whatever, remove it from the domain, uh, map the domain to another subfolder, whatever. So, but it, it should never be accessible anymore. And then, of course, you have to clean it, not just clean, uh, remove the things that pro produces the, 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 the problem, but also find the source. And the cool thing is, if you have a, the backup strategy that I mentioned before, if you, got, if you get hacked, you can always, you have, a, you have a time frame of just one day. You can compare the backups with each other and you will see when the files changes, change. And then you can look in this time frame, you can look for the log files and then you can, most of the time, okay, you have to be a little bit more experienced to understand how the log files will work. Uh, but then you will find the easy, way easier than if you just look and try to find through the log files, if you just have a limited time frame. And of course, uh, it's important if you have, if you are using Joomla that you have access to the log files. So try to be sure that you have a hosting company that can provide you access log files, error log files, all the things. And so if you got hacked, of course, find the source, cle uh, close the source, remove the old files completely, nothing should be left over, and then put it back online. <laughs> and this is, I, I know that's not easy task. A lot of people cannot do it, and you need a little bit of experience and a little bit of knowledge where you, can, where you have to look into. So I had a case, um, um, it was ransomware or something, so all JavaScript files were, were changed, and the pattern was quite similar, but not, not, uh, not the same. It's not, 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 sim uh, not the same uh, in each, uh, every file was different, but quite similar pattern. So, but the guy had, I think, over 2,000 JavaScript files on the website. So, can you imagine to go through all of them and clean this, this, this part of it? And the easy, easy part was, if you know what you are doing, you can download everything. And I just wrote a regex that, all, that, that the pattern was, uh, was true, so the, the same pattern. And I, and I removed all the code within two or three seconds. So, this is, this is, you, you don't want to do these things manually. So, but you know what you're doing, you can, clean, you can do it very fast. And important, of course, very important is uh, to use the power of the Joomla community. We have a great community and go to the forum, ask for help, ask for people who, are, who, knows, uh, who are in security team, for example, and they will help you. I don't know whether David has the time for it. Do, do not ask the security team. Do not team. ask him, <laughs> but you can ask me, whatever, or in the forum, because we are here to help. We are, we are open source and we, we, are, we help each other. So always, yeah, go out and don't be ashamed to ask. Always ask. Okay, we have uh, the, sec the third layer is the server la layer. And I don't mean uh, settings on the server sp specifically. So operation systems, uh, whatever, uh, firewall rules, I mean, I mean um, factors that can increase the, the, the security within Joomla. So the one that we spoke about is already the protect the backend from external access. So create a, a, a protected serve, uh, folder. Then of course, uh, keep, the, keep the server, server up to date. I mean, uh, in this case, I mean PHP version. I have to, I have to hurry, I think. I still have the performance part. <laughs> oh, you have time? Yeah, okay, great. Nice. Okay, that's okay. So keep the PHP version up to date, keep the, oh, everything up to date. So, but if you, are, if you have a managed contract, you don't have to mess with this or deal with it. But if you are running your own server, then you should have a good tool that can, does it or can do it for you. Or you, you have to be knowledge enough to do it. But don't forget to do it. Uh, another good point for security is, of course, to activate uh, SS, uh, SSL certificate. So you, you have connection over HTTPS. And the good thing is, is that it has a side effect that it's also a good SEO factor. So it's also, it get more and more attract attraction from Google and it, you can get also higher rankings. Of course, once you switch, it will fall down because you have other uh, different uh, URLs, but it will gr grow. Uh, everything what I, what I did until now, uh, so the grow was better afterwards. And it's, it's, it's um, indispensable, it's crucial for, for uh, e-commerce, for online shops, everywhere where you have, you ask for credentials. It's very important that you switch to HTTPS. So then the channel is end-to-end uh, -end and, and it's completely encrypted. So if even somebody can take, get the data in between, they cannot, they cannot de decrypt it. They, they don't know what it is, it's just, you cannot read it as a human, yeah? And um, that's important. And once you did it, and um, it's very easily, in Joomla it's quite easy because we don't use absolute URLs in the database. So if you can just switch with one click and if you want to force it, it's even possible through the application. Uh, we have in global settings, we have uh, 
uh, an option force SSL. But what I would suggest you to completely switch everything over the HTTPS port, so 443, four, four, yes, 443, four, uh, and, um, and completely close the AT port, the normal HTTP, because if you, everything can go through HTTPS, you can, you can avoid uh, calls or, or block, completely block uh, post uh, requests over the HTTP uh, port. And um, once you once you uh, make this, uh, uh, another point is don't. Uh, it's a good option to force it over the over the settings, but you can also force it over over. For instance, if you're an Apache or over um, over over Edge Edge Access, it's even better. So you can just ask wh what port was uh, requested, and then just uh, redirect to the 443 port. It's even better because everything not what is not going uh, through the Joomla uh, flow process will also be redirected. So also images, everything will be redirected to HTTPS. It's better than just using the force, but it's also a good helper if you cannot, if you cannot change things on the server. And, um, and take a, pay attention to mixed content. If you switch once, uh, if you include something in the, in the HTML page, uh, HTML, uh, content uh, over HTTP, you will get mixed content and then you won't have the green lock in the address bar. So look through the code and look where you, where you include something over HTTP and change it to HTTPS. So that's also important because uh, the modern browsers do not, just do not load the, the, the information over the unencrypted uh, websites or URS. Uh, another point is uh, CDN can help you if you, not CDN, but if you use a proxy, proxy server like uh, a security proxy like Cloudflare. So they also have a lot of rules, patterns that they can already filter a lot of requests for you, so you can put the domain, can, the CNAMP uh, will, will go to the proxy server first and they will, uh, they will forward the request to your server and if they, if they, if they notice a DDoS attack or whatever, so a lot of traffic, they can, they can block, they can block as a, something like a firewall, it's something like a firewall for you and also you can improve a lot of things, you can stay always on, so it's, if your server is down, then the proxy servers can uh, respond to the request, request and send the content back and there are some, some good things and you should take a look on it. And like I said, it's, it's good for user experience. So if your server's down, you can still get. And CDN in general is good, but it's for improvement uh, of performance. Uh, but we can do this later. I don't want to lose too much time now. Then of course, uh, check firewall rules. If you have access to the server firewall rules, check uh, whether everything is set properly, whether you can close a lot of ports that are activated by default if you don't use email, SMTP, whatever, I, uh, pop or IMAP on the server, you can close the spots, the spots, you don't need them. And you just limit the risk of being uh, attacked through the spots or that your server get uh, a DDoS attack on the spots, whatever. So just close them. Just let the pods open that you really need. And if you want to block the countryside, it's also use the firewall rules for, for, uh, to block it. Uh, another point is MySQL uh, database. If you have database on the server, you're running your own server. Try to lim uh, limit the access from external. Just allow a local host as a local local uh, connection. Then what do we have? If you have an own server of uh, you will have of course SSH access. So to to the command line over the command line, so you can maintain the server and pu push some comments in. Um, you should always um, dis disallow password login and always can generate key keys. So it's quite easy, you can just, uh, you create a uh, key pair, a public or private key, you, you, you keep the private key, you put the public key on your server and just, just log in through the keys. Never allow the password because a lot of bots or whatever, whatever tries to just to log in via brute force attacks with your password. So nobody will have, who does not have your key will ever be able to, to log into your server. So always disallow passwords, just use keys and check file permissions. So some files don't need uh, write access, so just uh, just reading access, like 4444 config configuration or edge access. And if you're not sure, you should go to manage hosting. <laughs> okay, so I have to speed up a little bit. So uh, the second part, the performance. So again, the question, what does performance mean and what, what I'm talking about if I say performance? Uh, why is performance so important and what you can do um, uh, on the Joomla side, on the server side. But the server side, we will just go through briefly because we have another session on Sunday if you're interested. Uh, we will talk about uh, server side optimizations for Joomla. It's at 9.45, early in the morning. 
uh, then we will uh, take this uh, a, a little bit deep, deeper, talk about a little bit deeper. So when I talk about performance, I mean the transfer time, the la latency, the delay after you send a request to the server and you get the response back. So, and also the, requ the pr process request uh, within the server. So how fast can your server process uh, the request? So if you have a big component with th thousands of database uh, queries, so it will take uh, some time. So I th and I'm talking about this before. So when you click on it, you want to see the result immediately. And that's quite obvious why it's important if you are, uh, you know, from yourself, if you click on a link and you want to see, you, see, you want to get the data, you want the information. You don't want to wait for seconds and to, till it's loaded. So you get really frust frustrated. So in my case, after two, three seconds, I, I'm a little bit, mm, and, and then after five seconds, I, I, I close the closer tab. I close the website. I don't, I, don't, I don't want to wait too long for information. I will search for an, a, other uh, resource for this information. So the bounce rate in, in, uh, increases uh, extremely. And of course, if you, especially if you have a shop, if you sell something, if you are really important, you, you rely on the website, it should be quite fast. It will be really good, really fast. So you, you will lose a lot of pot potential customers if, you, if your website is not fast enough. And Joomla. Another story is I wrote a small, how was it? I, I wrote an uh, override and I sh uh, this override should show uh, four, uh, three, three articles, the la latest three articles. And I tested on my local machine, everything was fine. And I put it on the, on the, on the, on, uh, on the server to, for a project. And, and then it was so slow, over one minute loading time. What hmm. the heck happened? And I didn't test it uh, with a real environment, with a normal environment. And I just, and they had over thousands, they had thousands of articles, I think five or, or six thousand art articles. And I forget to set a filter that I just want to, to, to look for, for a specific category. And then I put it online and, and he go, went through all the articles. So this is also a performance eater, where if you do something like this, always test with the real data. Because if, if they would, had, uh, would have uh, only 10 articles, nobody would mention. But after a year, maybe they would have 100, 200, and then they would start no noticing it. Something is not wrong. What did you do? So this is also important. So we look, but this is more advanced. It's, it's more for developers. If you, take, if you write something or create a, or take over a project, to go to step through the code and look <coughs> where you have some bottlenecks. And it's not, not easy, of course, but you, you have to be a little bit more experienced, but this is what you can do, what you can do easily as a user too. And most of the time, if you look on a the website, they have a lot of HTTP requests. So every HTTP request, we go over TCP, uh, the transport uh, protocol, and each request needs a handshake. So you lose a lot of time for each, for each uh, uh, source that you have to load. Mm -hmm. So the more, the more sources you load, the more HTTP requests you have, the, the longer it takes to load a website. So a good thing is, a um, possible solution is um, to limit it. What can you do? First of all, you can uh, minify. Minify uh, means that you don't, uh, that you, if you have a lot of white spaces, you, the computer doesn't need, the browser doesn't need to, uh, to that, that it is readable for humans. So uh, you can everything push squash together. So without white spaces, w without line breaks, everything together. And you can uh, concatenate uh, static files. You, I mean, uh, if you have a lot of JavaScript files, you can put every separate file in one big one, in one big file. Uh, the same with CSS. And of course, the files will be big, bigger, but you have just one request. So you, the, the channel will be open and you download directly from the server. It will increase, increase your, the, the loading time. Uh, and so I will tell you how you can do it later because it's quite easy. We have something, it's an external third-party uh, extension, a plugin, but it's an awesome plugin and I always recommend it. What you can also do is to comp use compression, JZIP. If you install Joomla, you have in the global settings uh, compressed with JZIP. It's an option, it's deactivated. Most of the browsers and most of the modern, modern browsers and servers are supporting JZIP. It's quite usual nowadays. So activate JZIP. Um, this option will only activate the JSIP for the compression for HTML output, not for the files. So you could use HTML access rules to also, also um, add the compression for files, or you can use the, the plugin that I, that I will call, that I will mention. And um, 
ba, 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 ba. Of course, uh, another another thing is what you can optimize is the positioning of the files. So if, if you include the JavaScript files above the uh, and the top and the head, uh, then then um, you, you you won't see the HTML output until the file was loaded. So it makes sense to put JavaScript files to, to the bottom and also CSS, but not all CSS because then you will see uh, uh, first the HTML output without uh, style sheets, but afterwards it will be reloaded uh, after. So it makes sense to put uh, JavaScript to the bottom. And this is what you cannot do directly with the core, but we have J, uh, JC, uh, JCH uh, Optimize. Maybe you, you should know, you should heard about it. JCH Optimize. It's a great plugin, small plugin. It's, it's, it, there's also a free, a free version, but also a pro version. And if you can afford it, buy, buy the pro version to support the developer. It's, it's, it's really wonderful. It's great. I use it in all my projects. And it's, it's, it's great. You can just, um, it has some predefined optimizations, uh, optimization steps. So you can click on ultra, ultra. And the great thing is it also uh, minifies the HTML output. So if you open the source, source page, you will see just one line. So you don't have to transmit uh, empty spaces or whatever. So it, it, it optimizes on the server. It caches already uh, and use JZIP also for the files. And it's it's great plugin. You, have, you should take a look on it. And of course, um, that's, that's not so easy because if you use these kinds of tweaks, uh, you can break break things. So it's important that you test and and maybe do not uh, over optimize it. Maybe go a step down um, so that the website still working fine, just fine. And what you can do is just open the uh, developer browser console, and you will see if you have a JavaScript uh, problem, you will see directly. Okay, there's there's a conflict, JavaScript conflict, or some files couldn't be loaded. That's also important if you, for performance, if you include uh, files or externally or locally, doesn't matter, uh, to check where, what, what uh, code the uh, response, response, the response. If it's a 404, then you should uh, remove the including in, in, within, the, within your code. So the files are not available anymore, but you still try to get, to get those files on every loading. And it's, it's a HTTP request that you can save. So remove everything what is what's not there anymore. Just make it clean. Of course, uh, use caching. I did some testing, and it, it will increase dramatically the output. So we have several steps on caching. We have the globe in the global settings. We have the smaller uh, so part of caching. So you can cache more module outputs. But uh, the more the more uh, I'll say the stronger caching mechanism is the plugin, the cache plugin. So you know you know the cache site plugin. Page, page plugin, so the complete output will be cached, and on further requests, it, uh, the, the output will be will be sent to the to the browser. So the problem is, of course, if you have dynamic uh, things like a like a timer or whatever, then it, you it's or we had the problem with the access token. So it's it's if you have just a static file where you, you have a website with information, it's great to use a page cache plugin. Uh, if you have parts that are dynamic, um, you can use the conservative plug, uh, the, the caching with uh, the part caching, and of course you can set uh, uh, you can set the cache timer down so it will cache just for five minutes or whatever. And of course you can re uh, warm up and recache uh, and clear the cache manually or automatically. We have also plugins for this. Regular labs. <laughs> uh -huh. Regular labs. <laughs> yeah, for instance, or mine, but I don't want to advertise it. <laughs> Yeah. Another uh, thing is, of course, um, uh, do use caching, server-side caching, uh, Varnish, Memcached, Redis. There are a lot of things that you can use, and Redis and Memcached is already natively supported in Joomla. But I will talk about it uh, on Sunday. So, but, but to be honest, uh, the, the cache within Joomla and the pa page cache is more more than enough for normal website projects. If you have 100, 200 concurrent users per second. Then you should think about server-side caching, but but if you just have some users per second or one user per second, it, it's the effort is not worth it. Yeah. It's, you will you will go good with the caching mechanisms uh, within Joomla. For instance, I um, I have a page cache extended in my portfolio, where I already uh, create compressed files. Uh, the static files that that are created after the request are already compressed and I save them compressed. So you, you will save a little bit of time of the CPU to compress the files before they are sending to the browser. So it's, a, it's an extended, if you, you could also take a look on it, page, uh, page cache extended is the name. And another thing what you, that you can optimize, but you should uh, 
that's not um, so easy task is to optimize the mobile output. So to put, to just send to the browser the, the data back content back that is really really specifically for this device kind of device. So this is also a plugin that I have. So how does it work? If you if the browser uh, requests a, a specific URL, it always sends header information, and there's a an user agent and parameter user agent and over this user agent so the normal browsers mobile android whatever they send a specific user agent uh, and you can you can you can detect the user agent and you you can uh, you know wh what device was uh, calling the, the was sending the request so if it was a mobile it will have a specific user agent and so you can you can um, you can you can define define on the server on the server side which co what content should be should be sent back so if you have a sidebar for instance with videos you don't want to to send uh, the video to to, the, to a mobile user who is who is using a mobile network, because he, the problem is we of course we have Bootstrap you can you can remove you can hide it via CSS. The problem in the back end, back, uh, background this file or this information is still loaded from your from your smartphone. So and this this is where you can improve the loading time in, increase uh, increase it uh, make, uh, greatly if you if you if you just uh, delete or remove this this part. Um, from uh, from the content and then send it back just without this part. So and it's also a plugin that I have. It's the, I, you don't see it here. Uh, device specific content, and it's a it's a library, a third party library uh, at GitHub. Uh, and I just I just include the library and, and wrote a small plugin that uh, uses this library to define or to determine what what device is uh, sending the request. And this is very good, very great. If you, for instance, if you have what I have a lot, uh, uh, lately, um, if you have a banner, so you want to show a hor hor horizontal banner, horizontal banner, uh, on on a big screen, but you don't want to show it because it, it will, you don't see it. Then you can say, okay, on, on the desktop, show this big banner. On a mobile phone, show a small little banner. And this is very easy with with the plugin that I wrote, device specific content. You can just you can just define okay if if uh, desktop if laptop or desktop, then blah blah blah. If mobile then blah blah blah. That's all what you have to do. And you can the great thing is uh, it it is a system plugin. It can be used everywhere. So in, in the template overrides in your own extension in your own plugins, you can use it everywhere. So it is always trigger. You can always get access to it. Look up. All right. Uh, another thing is, but it's very specific to my project. Uh, maybe you saw it once. Uh, I use I use fonts for my for, for the logos of my extensions. And and on, on the starting page, I had I have I, I don't know maybe thirty or forty extensions already. So and, and every logo was loaded. So I had <coughs> over forty requests for each for each image. There were there were one request. And for Frank, the, our big Frank, Delvintal. Uh, made an advice and said, uh, "Why don't you replace the, form, uh, the images with, with, with a Google form? Because I use a Google form to create these images, and then I replaced the form, uh, the, the, the images with the form. So I had to to include it once, and then I could show every each logo just with normal characters. You know, so I had one request instead of forty. So su such small things can increase the, the lo loading time really, really great. And." Of course, like I said already, check browser console for errors, for bottlenecks. I know. And yes. Okay, server performance. Uh, there's no reason to not to use PHP 7.1 now. Because if you, are, if you cannot upload because incompatibility, whatever, if extensions are not ready, then they are not really good extensions. You should look for other extensions. They can do the same. But there's no reason to not using PHP 7 nowadays so it's it's it's, it's unbelievable how, what a, what a boost you will get just with, by switching the php version so we did a lot of tests also when i worked in another company and it, it doubles the time of the, the it's well, half the time of the process and and the and the memory usage was four times less so you can handle more much more requests so it it will increase really great and it's very, it's like uh, low-hanging fruits, and has, and they have a lot of, m maybe even the most influence. So just go, and if you're not <coughs> running on PHP 7, then you are doing something wrong. Go and click and change to PHP 7. Okay, good. 
then of course we have the possibility to set cache controlling so that you say to the browser you should cache these file images for one year or J uh, JavaScript files, CSS files. This is not included in the edge to access example. This is what you should we have to do manually. But once you set it, it's quite good. So on every request, your browser knows, okay, this, those files, I, I don't have to reload them. I can, you, I can take the local copy from the local storage and it will also improve. So, so you ju just have the request to the HTML, you get this one but all the others are not modified and you load it from the storage and it will be quite really fast. Then of course, switch to HTTP 2. So the new protocol for transport, this transport uh, protocol. And uh, with it, uh, the more data, the more requests you have, uh, more, more information you have and the more files that you include, the, the, bigger, result, uh, the bigger the result will be. So in some tests with it, I did also a lot of tests, we had, we had about around about 10% faster response faster because it's it's not textual anymore it, it uses multiplexing and you have one connection for parallel uh, tra connection uh, transmissions and you also have the functionality that it pushes already so the server don't wait for the request for the second request because the server knows the request will come if you create if you load a page I'm, I'm almost done almost done if you, if you request a page, then the server will, does know that the next request will be the CSS file the JavaScript file it, it, Depends, depends what you have got in the HTML output. So and it already pushes uh, the information directly to, to the browser. So it increases the loading the speed. Then um, you can use Nginx with uh, Nginx caching as a reverse, reverse prox proxy directly on your server. So the first request goes to Nginx and then it handles, uh, for instance, static files can be handled by, 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 uh, by Nginx. The, uh, he just responds, uh, sends the uh, static files back. And uh, all other things uh, will go through Apache. It's run in the backend when it, it does the, the normal creation of the website or the page. And then, okay, I think I, I'm running out of time now. So using CDN, yeah, blah, blah, blah. CDN is also a great thing. Who, who does use uh, CDN? Oh, not many. You don't have international uh, customers or visitors? You know what it is? Okay, I don't have to explain. So it's really good. So for, for in my case, it's very good because I have Joomla extensions and they're lo loaded from, from all around the globe. So, and if somebody from Tokyo is uh, loading my extension, the good thing is my server does not have to process the, the, file, uh, the request because I have, uh, I have a CDN worldwide and I have a server in Tokyo. And th this server, the nearest server to the visitor will send my, the static file to, to, the, to, the, to the visitor to the user who wants to download it. And it's, it increases, of course, the loading time also greatly. And, but it makes really only sense if you really use your global, global visitors and not local or country-wise. So and, uh, there are some tools to check the performance. Uh, Google PageSpeed Insights, also to make fast checks. And they will give you some hints what you can, what you can improve. Uh, web page test for, for response times. Uh, Pingdom, JT Metrics, there are several, several tools that you can use just to get a quick overview. And of course, what's also good is uh, to, to activate the debugger in Joomla. I forgot it in my Joomla star, uh, part. And then look, uh, if you open and load the website, you, you have a debug, mo uh, debug uh, tabs or sliders. And you can look what requests were sent to the database, uh, how many memory was used, what trigger need, needed the most time. So it's, it's good to make the uh, investigation and then search for the bottlenecks and remove them. I think I'm, thank you very much for listening.